Well, it's been known for a long time that one way to extend the lifespan of laboratory animals is simply to reduce their energy intake. And in rats and mice, one can increase their lifespan by 30 or 40 percent. We started looking at the effects of energy restriction on the brain in the context of age-related neurodegenerative disorders and found that we could slow down the, for example, abnormal accumulation of amyloid or the degeneration of dopamine neurons in the Alzheimer's and Parkinson's model by reducing energy intake. Now, there's a number of ways you can reduce energy intake. You can simply eat less at each meal or you can do what we call intermittent fasting. So reduce the frequency of the meals. And what I'm going to tell you today is that um, fasting does good things for the brain. Uh, in the animals, we have insight in into a lot of the neurochemical changes that are occurring in the brain that we think explain why uh, fasting is good for the brain. But there's evidence, not just from animals, but, but from humans, that fasting is good for the body. It will reduce inflammation. It will reduce oxidative stress in organ systems throughout the body. And one thing that happens when you fast that does not happen when you eat three meals a day is that your energy metabolism shifts so that you start burning fats. Okay, why does fasting bolster brain power? During development of your brain, but also in, your adult, in the adult, neurons are generated from stem cells. They grow out their axons and dendrites. They form connections with each other, synapses and communicate with, it, with each other. During aging, uh, many people, their brain ages successfully, they stay cognitively intact, whereas unfortunately others develop diseases. We think the reason, the main take home message of this talk is that fasting is a challenge to your brain and your brain responds to that challenge of not having food by activating adaptive stress response pathways that help your brain cope with stress and res resist disease. Um, some of the changes in the brain that occur with intermittent fasting also occur with vigorous exercise. Exercise and intermittent fasting both increase the production of proteins in the brain that are called neurotrophic factors. We discovered this many years ago back when I was a postdoc in Colorado in the 1980s. We found that these neurotrophic factors such as FGF and one called BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, promote the growth of neurons, promote the connection of neurons and strengthening of synapses. Also shown in the lower left, it turns out both exercise, intermittent fasting and using your neurons, uh, using your brain, can increase the production of new nerve cells from stem cells, at least in one region of your brain called the hippocampus, which is shown here. I mentioned ketones, which uh, come from burning fat, and that happens during fasting. The Romans discovered ketones, even though they, had no idea, they hadn't taken any chemistry courses or didn't know what it was. Uh, people with epileptic seizures back then, they thought they were possessed by demons. And they found if they take these people and shut them in a room and don't feed them, the demons will go away. What's happening is ketones go up, and it's well known that ketones suppress seizures. And in fact, ketogenic diets are used to treat, even today, patients uh, with severe epilepsy. We're doing in my work in my lab trying to understand why ketones are good for neurons. One reason is they provide an alternative fuel for the neurons that boost the energy levels in the neurons. Recently, we discovered that fasting, by increasing BDNF levels in the brain, this neurotrophic factor, uh, can increase the number of mitochondria in your nerve cells. And I'm not going to go into the details of this slide, but the mechanism is very similar to the mechanism whereby exercising your muscles increases the number of mitochondria in your muscles. The fasting is a mild energetic stress, and the neurons respond adaptively by increasing mitochondria, which helps them produce more energy. And in this paper cited down here in Nature Communications, we recently showed that uh, by increasing the number of mitochondria in neurons, it can increase the ability of the neurons to form and maintain synapses and 
thereby uh, increase uh, learning and memory ability. In addition to the increasing neurotrophic factors and increasing the energy, uh, neuronal bioenergetics, if you will, we have found that intermittent fasting will enhance the ability of your nerve cells to repair DNA. So right now, at, and, and also probably uh, exercise and, um, and also uh, intellectual challenges. And again, what's happening in this case, when you're using your neurons, exercising your neurons, uh, it causes a mild oxidative stress. And at the same time that there's increased oxidative stress, the cells are enhancing their ability to repair oxidative damage to DNA. Why, why is it that the normal diet is three meals a day plus snacks? It isn't that it's the healthiest way eating pattern. And that's my opinion, but I think there's a lot of evidence to support that. There are a lot of pressures uh, to have that eating pattern. There's a lot of money involved. The food industry, are they going to make money from skipping breakfast like I did today? No, they're going to lose money. If people eat fast, the food industry loses money. What about the pharmaceutical industry? What if people, you know, do some intermittent fasting and exercise periodically and are very healthy? Is the pharmaceutical industry going to make any money on healthy people? So one challenge for society, and, and this is one of the purposes of these TED talks, hopefully, is that uh, communication is the way to improve health. People understanding what they can do to improve their health and then taking action, like Jeff talked about uh, in his own uh, talk this morning. So I would urge you to uh, communicate and spread the word that there are ways for people to be healthy. Uh, and maybe we can do this even with, uh, of course, I'm working for the NIH. And one thing about the NIH is we're using your taxpayers' money to try to help your health. We don't have a profit motive. And so the, really one of the main reasons I've got interested in things like intermittent fasting, exercise, trying to understand at the cell and molecular level what's happening in the brain is this is research that isn't commonly done and it's not done at all by pharmaceutical industries and it's not done so much. Uh, so I'm going to end with this slide and uh, thank you very much for your attention and um, try it out. You can just play around with this. Uh, these kinds of diets and you may find what we found in our human studies though is it's kind of like exercise if you've never exercised before and you start you go out and run three miles you're not going to feel good if you eat three meals a day and all of a sudden you go a whole day don't eat anything that day you're going to feel irritable and ornery and so on but it turns out if you can kind of force yourself to do that maybe one day a week for a month and then two days a week you get used to it and after a month or two, many people can adapt to that kind of diet with no problem and you'll find on the days that you don't eat so much, you're more productive. Thank you.